I think a lot of people currently are talking about artificial intelligence, which I'm not sure really exists. Um, I think even Ray Kurzweil would agree with that. A deep learning and machine learning, both two very different things, do exist. And I think it's those deep learning algorithms which will allow the healthcare and health tech sector to identify and diagnose conditions earlier. There's lots of examples of deep learning engines identifying pneumonia and cancers. And I think the... Um, exponential growth in deep learning platforms leading to eventual artificial intelligence will change healthcare's paradigm from ground up. So from creation of compounds, not needing a laboratory to synthesize one, uh, right the way through to product design and deployment, uh, I think I think is the pro the main trend that will change everything. And if I, if I can quickly uh, go on beyond the two minutes, I, I don't always think though the trends it's the sexy trends that change things. Uh, you know, whenever I present at a congress or go to a congress, there's lots of people on stage talking about bio nanotechnology, deep learning, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, natural language parsing, natural language processing, um, and the reality is in healthcare and certainly the pharmaceutical sector that most of the people I meet, from heads of franchise, C-suite, right the way through to the the, the kind of ground level uh, people working in the trenches. They can't even build a well thought out, congruent search search engine marketing strategy, uh, or deploy social media effectively within CRM and CLM using, frankly, antiquated systems uh, currently to drive decisions. So it's it's easy to look at trends that are, are going to change the the industry exponentially, like artificial intelligence. But actually, I think the main focus at the moment is uh, learning the core competencies and the trends which will allow us to understand audiences better and serve up better content that, that saves lives. And the bravest thing I've ever done in business, invariably, uh, maybe twofold, I think bravery is probably essential every day in, in leaving companies, starting companies, joining new companies, uh, leaving a, a big, the big corporate world, the pharmaceutical sector, um, having a, a really uh, successful career there, but making a decision to join a network agency as head of digital um, was pretty brave, especially whilst moving house and having my second daughter. Uh, but subsequently, I think it was setting up my the two startups that I've run, one in-house and one uh, subsequently on my own, where many people I respected in industry sat across the desk and said, you definitely shouldn't do it, it won't work. Um, and it, it took me a number of years in my career to realize that actually the, the core competency framework and the experiences that I had developed allowed me to probably make a better informed decision. So going against the advice of people you admire a lot, ignoring their belief that it wouldn't work, and sometimes quite vociferous um, comments that it, that it wouldn't work, and going ahead and doing it anyway, um, I guess in retrospect, was probably the bravest thing I've ever done, and, and without doubt the most rewarding given the results we've had to date. I'm going to go back to my very early days as a salesperson. My, my dad said to me, we're all salespeople, and I completely agree, um, regardless of what discipline we work in and what we do in life. But I, I think defining purpose is, is maybe more important than uh, no, you have to define it to understand it. So asking people what the purpose of their job is and then asking them immediately what the objective of their job is, we often hear the same answer to provide sales, market share, to please my manager, to provide drugs to patients. Um, the purpose of our job in healthcare is to provide healthcare solutions. The objective is to make money. And I think if we focus on the, the objective, making money, we will not achieve the purpose, which is to provide healthcare solutions and save lives. So the, the purpose, how do I find purpose, is maintaining focus on, on delivering healthcare solutions, delivering information which saves, saves lives, and um, being the very best we can, be maverick, challenge the status quo. In healthcare and pharmaceuticals, more than ever, um, there is a lot of rhetoric around patient centricity and customer centricity. And the reality is that uh, one search on a search engine, it takes a fraction of a second to show you that those organizations aren't behaving as if they are patient centric or customer centric. And that has to change. And our raison d'etre is to redefine performance in healthcare. Um, and we hold ourselves to that value uh, and we are continuing to try and do so. I have an amazing group of people around me. Uh, so I have yeah, in the two companies that I run, one I co-founded, which is an art and robotics engineering company out of MIT called Art Matter. 
Um, I'm surrounded by artists and engineers, so uh, they are a bunch of divas, but they keep me very grounded. And then with Performance IO, um, it, it feels a bit like a family. We're at the end of our first fiscal year. We've grown exceptionally fast, uh, but with uh, the team that's been together for a long time, and um, them alongside a fabulous wife and two little girls who are it's very easy to stay grounded. When you come home, work in healthcare, and you come home to see your family, uh, you, you remember why you get out of bed in the morning. And if we can do a tremendous job, both in uh, performance IO of providing healthcare solutions, early diagnostics, relevant information, and help pharmaceutical and healthcare sector uh, behave more like the expedients of this world and how they use data to provide relevance, uh, will be saving lives and helping lives. And on the robotics side, um, we're applying the technologies at the interface of art and engineering robotics uh, and extrapolating that into healthcare to help people with physical uh, disabilities to re-engage with creative arts and everyday uh, activities. And, and doing those, those roles and running those companies and seeing the effect it has uh, on people, it's incredibly easy to stay grounded. So uh, long may that continue. Uh, and if I'm not grounded, there's a group of friends around me that tell me that I'm acting like a diva and uh, in no uncertain terms, stop it immediately. I'm, I'm used to be one of those people that slept very well and uh, work has always been a passion of mine. And um, I used to work hard, play hard, sleep well. Uh, but more and more, it's the companies. And, you know, the more people you employ, the more jobs you create in the community, the more responsibility you feel for delivering success and making sure that those people have an environment which they can thrive and they can learn and grow play which is a core competent a core value of of, of my companies is the idea of play uh, something you do voluntarily that takes you outside of your comfort zone with no predefined outcomes um so Having company values that allow people to thrive, living to those values is important. And the fear, fear for me is uh, creating companies where those values fail to exist or cease to exist. Because I think we've all worked in companies where the values on the wall uh, aren't the, the things we see in everyday life. So it's maintaining values, uh, creating or continuing to drive success for the organizations which allows people to grow and thrive. Uh, and more and more that and my daughters uh, growing up is uh, keeps me up at night and, and brings some element of fear. Working in healthcare was always a privilege to me, from when I was a drug rep, going in to see doctors, to marketing and creating campaigns, to working in agency networks to provide campaigns. Um, and it was in that period that I worked in mental wellness for one of my previous companies uh, and committed to myself that if I ever created a, an enterprise that was successful enough, we would do our pro bono work in mental wellness. So we support an amazing charity, not sure if I'm allowed to mention them, but I'm going to anyway, uh, the Peace Love Foundation. Uh, and I joined the board of the Peace Love Foundation a few years ago, and they use creativity to help people with mental wellness challenges or neurodiversity issues uh, to communicate via creativity, and mainly kids in prisons and schools uh, who have experienced trauma. Um, and so we do all of uh, their pro bono work for them in performance marketing, end-to-end -end performance marketing, uh, to make sure they can reach as many people as possible. Uh, and that is the, a cause which I think the environment we live in 24-7, um, always on, peer pressure, social media, uh, it, we're going to see an explosion in, in mental wellness challenges in society. And I think uh, understanding ways, uh, not just through the arts, that we can uh, find peace of mind, make sure we apply as much importance to our mental wellness as our physical fitness. Uh, and that is the cause I would, I'd like to continue to, to support and, and work in. Learn to find headspace. So I run um, to find headspace and, and create peace of mind. I go snowboarding. I, I go on any kind of uh, summer holiday, I lie on a sun lounger or trying to keep my children alive or lie on a sun lounger and I think about work. But whenever I get into onto a chairlift, I don't, don't think about anything. And I think that time is absolutely critical uh, for both myself and for people in my organization where we put mental wellness as a, a core a core value in terms of finding headspace to maintain mental wellness. Uh, be maverick. Um, not sure if all of my 
uh, global FTSE 500 companies would like to hear that we're maverick, uh, but we're delivering unbelievable results for them by always challenging the no appropriately. If I was if I was to listen to all the people who, who said in my career, people as line managers, as people who I respect a tremendous amount, very successful people in business, who counseled me at certain stage not to do something or told me it wouldn't work uh, I wouldn't have created I wouldn't have had the failures or the successes I've had today and I you know to, to be maverick to always challenge the no that's coming across back at you uh, and to sometimes do it anyway is 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 where we learn and grow and I you know I, I would um, yeah encourage everyone in business to be maverick uh, and to, and to ensure you enjoy what you do, of course.